Uh, I'm going to bring on our next panelist now, who is Chris Loeffler with Caliber Companies. So bringing you on stage now. There he is. He's got his hard hat and his uh, groundbreaking shovel there. I love it. <laughs> hey, how Jimmy, how are you? Good. Good to see you. Yeah, great to see you. I still remember our first uh, meeting at the SALT conference talking about Opportunity Zones when it was still so new. That's right. Yeah, you were, uh, you were on my, uh, my Opportunity Zones podcast way back when as well. I think that was spring of uh, 2019. I'll see if I can post a link to that podcast episode as well. But uh, Chris, you've got a lot to discuss with your Caliber Funds, which invests in, uh, it's a multi-asset fund, a very large multi-asset fund concentrated primarily or solely in the Southwest, I, I yep. believe. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. We see ourselves as a regional investor in the Southwest. So I look forward to sharing a little bit about us and, uh, and taking you through it. That works for everybody. It looks good. So uh, yeah, please do take it away, Chris. Thank you. Sounds good. Um, so I thought today, you know, not, not knowing how many folks in the audience know who we are, I would go through two key themes. One is a little bit about Caliber, the sponsor, which is, you know, essentially the, the company, if you invest in our fund that you're relying on to be your partner, act as your co-owner, uh, find great investment opportunities for your Opportunity Zone funds and, and hopefully drive value into your investment so that when you do sell 10 years down the road, you have the maximum possible tax benefit and the best possible uh, investment experience. So I'll talk a little bit about the sponsor caliber and who we are, what we do, and Opportunity Zones is one element of that. Um, and then I'll go into our fund and just talk about what, what our strategy is, what our view of the world is, and, and hopefully that uh, leaves you informed on, on us as an option in the world of, of Opportunity Zone investment. So we see ourselves as, as a leading full service investment company that helps accredited investors and, and associated investment advisors to allocate funds towards real estate. So our view is that our clients are looking to take some portion of their net worth and get it out of stocks, uh, you know, bonds and traditional insurance products and put it into alternative investments. Our alternative is real estate and real estate related investments. And so if, if our clients are looking for income, we look at more income oriented investments, maybe direct investments in income producing properties or investments in income related uh, funds. And if they're looking to grow their wealth, uh, we're looking for more growth oriented investments. So we have an opportunistic real estate fund buying commercial real estate. And then of course we have our tax advantaged opportunity zone fund that's investing your capital gains, you know, their short or long-term capital gains into uh, commercial real estate development, et cetera. We've been uh, in business for over 12 years. We've sponsored about seven um, discretionary funds. So these are funds where you're investing and you're, you're giving us discretion to go out there and buy real estate on your behalf. And you're diversified across a large group of, of, of properties. We've also sponsored about 15 single asset offerings. And those are properties where we've raised capital into one specific project or, or um, investment. And so that creates the body of our work so far as a sponsor. Um, we consider ourselves to be an experienced sponsor with, with a track record, and, and I'm happy to share some of that with you. The company is run by a four-person executive leadership team that also has then designated the management to about an eight-person senior leadership team that runs our full group of about 50 employees. And uh, we have an integrated team that's worked together for a long time, actually executing on finding great deals, raising capital, making the right decisions to build and renovate those properties, managing them through throughout their life cycle, and then selling them for a profit. And so this team, I guess, to, to maybe differentiate ourselves from other investment sponsors is a sponsor that has consistently and cohesively worked together for many years. We also have a great board of advisors that creates the, uh, the board for Caliber, including uh, Bill Gerber, who's a former CFO for TD Ameritrade, Michael, uh, who's in the AI side of the, the industry at Core Scientific now, but has been a CFO in, in the M&A world for Microsoft, Intel, Blue Cross, et cetera. And Christopher, who has a, a tremendous amount of experience with public companies uh, through his experience with Herbalife. We're a pretty well recognized sponsor throughout the Southwest. And the reason why I think that's valuable to investors is that the more that we are recognized as a place to go to, to, to invest in real estate, the more that we sort of draw in off-market opportunities, deals, developers who have been working on a project that need uh, funding to get it to the next level. 
And that's been one of the key ingredients to our secret sauce to find great projects and deals. Um, just, you know, consistently the company has been featured publicly. And again, that just brings in a lot of recognition and information about us. We, uh, in, within Caliber's group of companies, we do acquisitions, meaning we're taking responsibility to acquire properties and, and find great investments. We're doing the asset management strategy, planning, design, development. Um, we, we do the, you know, sort of the purchasing, selling, refinancing process as well internally. And then we also do the development and construction on our assets internally. And the way that we differentiate is that we do all the services at the top level. So we do construction management or we do development management or we do asset management. At the, at the asset level, we often hire third-party companies like great third-party property managers, great third-party construction to general contractors, because we find that the scale that they have in their business allows them to execute on those types of real estate um, services at a better cost structure than we can perform at um, and with better efficiency. And so we can sort of manage the manager all the way throughout the life cycle of the investment. We, like I said, invest primarily focusing on the Southwest region, uh, Arizona, Colorado, Texas, Nevada, Utah, and Idaho. These are all markets that we think are fast growing markets with great population growth, great job growth, great trends with um, ongoing business development and economic growth. And we try to avoid markets that have a significant amount of reg regulation or a significant amount of, um, of uh, uh, you know, uh, foreign capital or capital coming in from Wall Street funds like large REITs that would compete with us on price. The other thing you'll hear me say a lot is that we're a middle market sponsor, meaning we're focused on investing in projects that um, in essence uh, are between a five and $50 million size. We think the middle market is a really special place because the entrepreneurial market, which is sort of the sub $5 million project size in real estate has a lot of competition. The institutional market, anything above 50 has a, a lot of competition. But in the middle market, it's large deals that are typically complicated to execute on that also require the, the, the company to be a little bit closer to the project and be a little bit more entrepreneurial than the large uh, institutional sized funds. And so we think that gives us a competitive advantage. We don't face a lot of competition. Um, when we're typically bidding on a project, we're one of the few uh, that can actually execute. And that seems to give us an opportunity to buy at a, at a pretty reasonable price. Right now, we're sitting on about 450 million in assets under management. We've seen our portfolio grow pretty significantly over the last four years, um, and uh, we expect that to continue to grow. We've also got about 450 million in new developments in our pipeline, which is projects we own the land for that we're continuing to de develop along the way. Um, all right, um, so track record wise, we've, uh, we've done about 174 properties uh, since inception, realized a 2.1 times equity multiple net. So that's net to the client um, over the life cycle. Some representative transactions, you know, we bought a, a property, South Mountain Square, renovated the apartments, sold it for 4.7 times equity multiple, which was incredible. Um, a Palms Apartments deal that we recently sold last year at 3.5 times. That was a three-year hold. Um, and you know, from a from a sponsorship standpoint, the key takeaway I just want to share with you is that we've got a lot of funds in the market. We're consistently finding projects, putting them under contract in escrow, and that gives a lot of deal flow and a lot of opportunity for our Opportunity Zone fund. So I'm going to spend a few minutes on the Opportunity Zone fund to give you an idea of the strategy we're pursuing there uh, and then open it up for questions. Um, as, I, as I mentioned, we serve primarily independent RIAs, wealth managers, family offices, high net worth individuals, um, and then real estate investors and professionals in, in terms of our, our client base. Uh, our fund essentially was built to capture this specific opportunity that we see, which is that since uh, the 2008 financial crisis, the effects of COVID um, do offer probably the best buying opportunity that we've seen um, since 2008. And uh, that's not just something that we're seeing, that's something that the rest of the world seems to be seeing. And so for those of you who are saying, gee, should I take a, a, a capital gain that I earned in 2019 or 2020 
and get it invested in an opportunity zone fund, I think that's a really smart strategy because you're taking a gain from the last cycle, you're investing it into a fund that can take advantage of the new cycle and you're getting a significant tax benefit to do so. The other thing I just wanna share with you before we get into our fund is a little bit about alternative assets. This is becoming kind of the mainstream way of investing if you haven't done this form of investing before. Uh, last year we were at, or this year we we're about 10.7 trillion in AUM for alternative asset funds, which includes real estate funds. And the projection by Prequin is that we'll go from 10 trillion to 17 trillion in the next five years. You're in good company. Uh, I won't spend a lot of time on opportunity zone funds in general, just because I know that many people are listening to this call already have this concept, but I just want to give you this one example. If you have a million dollar capital gain, um, and you put it into a traditional investment, making you 8% annualized in, in, in growth or appreciation. Net net, you will have 1.3 million after paying all your taxes. Um, and you'll have made 300,000 bucks over a 10 year period of time. If you do the same thing, putting it into an opportunity zone fund, again, assuming the same appreciation, annual appreciation rate, you would have 1.9 million or 900,000 in, in total return and you would basically have made um, two times the amount of tax that you paid in a tax incentive. I think the three key ingredients to a successful opportunity zone fund are fund infrastructure, having a track record and deal flow. Um, Caliber, the sponsor entity is a public reporting company. So we have the in infrastructure in place to manage the complex accounting, finance, tax, financial reporting, et cetera, that needs to be done to make sure that your opportunity zone investment stays in compliance. Uh, I think that's a, a, a huge risk factor for opportunity zone investors. And it's a risk factor we've covered off by bringing that infrastructure and building that out over a year's period of time um, and making sure we're partnered with some of the best external partners in, in the world. Um, we have a track record of successfully investing in these types of projects, doing adaptive reuse and, uh, and heavy reconstruction ground up development, which I think is, is necessary. And you've got to have deal flow because as money comes into the fund, we have to deploy within six months into good projects. And so having a consistent pipeline of good projects available to deploy capital into is, uh, is definitely necessary for success. Um, I won't, uh, I won't bore you too much with our, our, our strategy and our thesis. I think you can read about this if you wanna go into the details, but it really boils down to focusing on a growing region with great opportunity zones, with good population growth, good job growth, um, and, and then focusing on asset classes that make sense. Um, great asset classes like multifamily and industrial that are doing really well in a post COVID environment as well as opportunities to buy properties at a significant discount in the hospitality and commercial space. Um, those are the two places that we're looking. We think diversification is a smart strategy and we like the idea of being in a multi-asset fund because it gives us the ability over that 10 year period to buy, build, optimize the properties, sell, reinvest your gain and compound your gain over that 10 year period to produce the best possible investment outcome for you. It also in a larger fund format gives us the opportunity to participate in maybe more sophisticated exit strategies like uh, completing a portfolio sale or taking the portfolio public through an upread, which gives you as the investors for the maximum possible exit, as well as a lot more flexibility in liquidating your, your investment. Like I said, we're focused on the greater Southwest. Um, we're diversified. We are combining two strategies, opportunistic, which is ground up development and value add, which is taking existing properties and improving their cash flows. Um, we, uh, we are uh, an LP structure, so you do get a K-1 and uh, we are investing through, through the entire investment window, targeting a 13% IRR for investors and a two and a half times equity multiple, which we think is pretty achievable based on our track record and what we've done in the past. Uh, right now, the portfolio owns four major projects, uh, a multifamily project in our Roosevelt townhomes, our behavioral health hospital that just opened, uh, a downtown Mesa portfolio, which is a, a great portfolio of an adaptive reuse in downtown, and a new construction hotel. The fund is open for investment. We're one of the few that's consistently taking capital. 
So those of you who have what, roughly 45 days left until the end of the year to get invested, especially if you had 2019 gains that were extended, uh, can come in. And uh, we offer two classes of shares, um, one at, uh, at a million dollar minimum at an 80-20 split and one at a $250,000 minimum at a 75-25 split. So just some key takeaways before we open up to questions. Um, Caliber is one of the best funds, I think, in the country. We're focused on the Southwest. And so if you as an investor say, hey, I want to own real estate in that growing region, I think that makes sense. We work with some of the best uh, third-party providers to make sure that our fund stays in compliance. And uh, our team that's been working together for a long time is just executing a proven strategy that we've done in the past in opportunity zones. And so I think that's a, that's a key element to, to make sure that this is successful. If you want to get a hold of me, you can get me directly at uh, chris.loffler at caliberco.com. You can also call the company and uh, visit one of our two websites. So thanks very much. And, and Jimmy, if, uh, if there's any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you, Chris. Uh, it's great to see you again. Great to hear more about your fund. Yeah. If you do have questions for Chris, uh, we'll have time for a, a couple minutes of Q&A before we turn it over to the next fund. Uh, I've got a question for you, Chris, and, and we covered this in, in our podcast interview that we did uh, several months back, but uh, that was back in April and now it's mid-November. Uh, what type of impact have you seen the coronavirus pandemic having specifically on the Opportunity Zone marketplace and specifically where you're investing? And uh, you know, are, you, are you at all cautious or concerned or, or what, what, what's your outlook look like? Yeah, so we, we in March dropped about $500 million worth of deals out of our pipeline, um, dropped LOIs, dropped purchase contracts, probably left hundreds of thousands of dollars or more, maybe millions on the table in terms of uh, due diligence costs, um, and just sort of walked away from the market because we couldn't tell where it was going to go. We re-entered in September. Um, we feel really confident in our ability to, to proceed forward, knowing what we know about how the market is shaping up. And that comes from that confidence comes from two things. One is we've actually seen some of our key assets like multifamily assets and industrial assets improve and grow in value because of COVID. So we've got a good handle on where that's going. And then Caliber was started in late 2008. So we're highly experienced in buying foreclosure properties, non-performing notes, bankruptcy sales, you name it. And so if we enter into a period of distress, which it looks like some of the asset classes that we're targeting are doing, that's even more exciting for us, frankly, because we have a 10 year outlook. We know how to buy at a discount now. And if we do that and do that well, our returns go up and I think our relative risk actually goes down. Um, so I feel very good about being able to invest on a, on a go forward basis. And our team knows what to do in this, in this type of an environment, disrupted environment. Um, but I think COVID knocked out fundraising for Opportunity Zone funds. I think we probably all saw that. We saw Google searches for Opportunity Zone Fund almost flatline for six months, starting in, in April. Um, and um, I know traffic, and to my, traffic to my website was way down as well. Yeah, it's a shame because um, we got our final rules in December. We were all, you know, we were running and gunning out of the gate in January and February, and then you know here we are. So I'm 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 hopeful. Like I heard the last panel say that um, the new administration takes up the mantle of Opportunity Zone funds. I'm sure they'll pass a reform bill to talk about you know, reporting requirements and all the necessary things that are, that are good there. Um, but I also hope they extend our window because now that we have the rules and we have a strategy that works and that, that clearly is gonna create value for our communities, um, I'd love to have more room to run. Yep, absolutely. Uh, one final question before I cut you loose and we'll move on to our, our next presentation is, uh, you know, uh, and and forgive me if you're no longer offering this, but but you know, back when we last spoke in April, um, one of the points that was brought up during our discussion is that most qualified opportunity funds are only open to accredited investors, just by nature of how the SEC exemptions work. But you had some sort of offering for non-accredited investors. Are you still doing that? And 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 what is that exactly? Yeah, so interesting. Thank, thanks for asking, Jimmy. I, I, I completely forgot to mention that. We, so it, our, we have two entities. We have our Opportunity Zone Fund and we have our sponsor. The sponsor earns income from making the Opportunity Zone Fund profitable, basically, um, and provides all the real estate services to our fund. And so that sponsor entity still has an offering on Seed Invest. It's online. Um, you can Google it on, on seedinvest.com's website. Um, and they can, and people can buy $2,000 in, in stock um, at a minimum. 
and they can be accredited or non-accredited. And so we've had a bunch of people invest in the stock and in the op, in the sponsor. And even though it's not an, a qualified opportunity on investment, so they're not getting the tax benefit, it is a way for, for non-accredited investors to benefit from this form of investing because they're basically making money from the wealthy, making money, making investments into these uh, into these zones. And so we have that. Our, our, our fund is still accredited only. Um, and, uh, you know, if they extend the window, would we open a, a non accredited fund and opportunity zones? We, we would look at it for sure. Good. Well, uh, Chris, very good. Our, our time's up. I got to move on to our next present presentation. But uh, thank you for joining us today. Great to learn more about you and Caliber. And uh, give us that URL one more time. Yeah, so the main website is caliberco.com. And we also have caliberfunds.co. Awesome. All right. Thank you, Thank Chris. You. Take care.